In today's video, we are going to be green screening your anime figures. This is nice, simple and easy. And it's a really cool way of basically being able to manipulate and change your anime's figures background. So let's roll intro and get straight into the video. What's up there? Welcome to a brand new video on V2. In today's video, we will be green screening your anime figures. This one is nice and easy and you don't need any fancy setup to be able to do this. Basically, all you need is an anime figure, a green background, some lights, a camera, and of course, Photoshop to do this. To prove to you that you don't need all this pro equipment to get these results, here is a quick look at my setup. So as you can see, uh, we've got a couple of lights here. We have Rin with this green background behind her and my tripod is set at this really really funky kind of angle it's a uh, yeah a bit different so all that i needed for this one was this kind of green sheet here i bought a pack on amazon with a lot of different colors and green being one of them i'll leave a link to that in the description below so you, if you want to pick that up you can awesome so once you've taken your photo let's jump into photoshop and i'll show you what to do next so we are in photoshop as you can see i decided to take a picture of rin tosaka uh, the background i want to go for is uh unlimited blade works uh, this figure just screams that it needs that background so right so let's rename this so rin so we're not getting confused we've got rin and we've got a background layer so next up we're going to go to select once we're on select we're going to go to color range Color range we want to set around about 40% here. And as you can see on the back, we've got this kind of little map. What you're gonna wanna do is got your eyedropper and you're gonna click on the map. Now, the thing that you'll find here, and this will happen majority of the time, is that you haven't perfectly lit your green screen. Sometimes it's not, not even your fault, it's just, it's just the world and how it works. So I'm gonna show you how to fix this. So back into Photoshop. Uh, right, as you can see on the map here, we've only got uh, a little bit selected. We basically want all of the green so to do this what we're going to do is hold down shift and just keep keep clicking everywhere make sure all those colors are selected the only thing that we want as black is rin uh, and these like little swords over here so just make sure you kind of click everywhere get every shade of green that you can and then once that's done hit okay what that's going to do is that's going to select everything next up we want to expand the selection so go over to select again go down to modify expand and you're going to want to do this by about two pixels i've already got it selected here so off we go so next up we don't really want the figures outer lines to be sharp we want them to be a bit smooth so it blends in well with the background so we're going to feather this using a mask so um let's do it right so once again we're going to go to select this time we're going to hit select and mask it's going to bring up this little menu on the side over here what you want to do is where it says feather here Maybe make that about one pixel. Come down to here, make sure that your output is set to selection. Once that's done, hit OK. Now, I just want to make sure that my background is underneath. Go back onto the Rin layer with everything selected. And here is where Photoshop does the magic. So, all we do, hit backspace, and boom. Control and D to deselect. There we go. Looks awesome, right? 100%. But if you notice, looking back at this picture, there are some green kind of shadows here as to where the light has bounced off of that green screen and onto our figure so let's sort this out what we're going to do is we're going to create a hue and saturation adjustment layer once that's here where it says master at the top select greens only scroll down we want the little eyedropper so let's start with the sword over here you can hold alt and scroll in see how this green sheen is going over here let's click on that once that's selected, go to saturation and just bring that down. You see how that's already doing that? Awesome. Still a bit green on there. So let's create another one. Hue saturation. Sure. Greens are selected. Go down to the eyedropper. See how it's kind of green in here. Hit that green. Bring the saturation down. And there we go. That's starting to look awesome. You're probably going to have to do this a couple of times depending on how much green has gone onto your figure. So to save this video being super, super long, I'm just going to tidy this up. Okay, awesome. So once you've done that, what you want to do is hold control, select every layer apart from the background. We're going to hit right click and we're going to merge these layers together. Double click this, just rename. In, so we're not getting confused 
And now you're probably thinking, cool, that's it. I'm done. Peace. Love it. Easy. No, we're going to go that one step further. We're going to make some details and adjustments here to make sure that the, the figure looks like it's actually a part of the background. First of all, we want to match the figure with the background. So what we're going to do is create a luminosity mask. So a luminosity mask, what exactly is that? It's basically going to show us everything but the color. So what we want to do is create a solid layer. You click the little icon at the bottom down here, go to solid color. What we want to make sure is we're picking a color, one of these grays on the side here where you can see the saturation is zero. Hit OK. Now we want to change the blend mode to color. And it makes this lovely black and white image over here. Once that is done, we click that little circle at the bottom again, and we're going to create a curves adjustment layer. So bring the curves just below the color. What we want to make sure we're doing now is clipping that to the figure layer. So the only adjustments we're making with the curve is happening to the figure, not the background layer. So to do this, you want to hold down Alt, and just between the two layers, you'll see it changes to this icon with the arrow and the square. Click that, and that is clipped to that layer. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring down the darks here. We want to try and make sure that Rin's color kind of matches that of the background. So it's quite, quite light. So we'll bring some of them down. Highlights, we'll bring them. And it's all just about playing with this. Bring those blacks down. Now, if we click off of the color fill here, we can see what we've done. So you can see already that she is looking a lot more like she's supposed to be here. So once that is done, just delete that color fill layer. Next up, we want to add some depth to this image to make it look like Rin's actually part of this background. So to do that, we're going to add in some shadows. Now to do this, we want to create a new layer underneath Rin. And we'll rename this shadows. Now we're going to select the brush. We're going to make sure that black is our selection. Once this is done, we're going to make sure that our flow is set to around about, say, 8%. And what we're going to do now is just kind of draw some shadows on as to where we think Rin would leave some shadows on this image over here. So I kind of like to do that. Add a bit of shadow behind her over here. Now this is all kind of trial and error, but it's going to make a massive difference once we're done. So create some shadows in these gaps. Little shadow over here, tiny one. Oh, I want to leave some shadows where these swords were as well. Kind of make them up as you go. There we go. Now you can amend the opacity of these as well so they're not so harsh. We'll probably say around about 75 is going to be good. Now next up, we want to make sure that these shadows actually match the kind of shadow colors that are in the background. So to do this, we're going to create a solid color. It can be anything. Let's go red for now. Once that is done, what we need to do is clip this. So again, hold Alt or Option if you're on a Mac. Same as we did with the curves to Rin. Click on that there. Now, as you can see, the shadows have all gone red and they look a bit strange. Not to worry. Not to worry. We will be, we will be sorting this one out. It's all good. So double click on the color. What we want to do now is get the eyedropper tool. Kind of find like a shadowy area in the background. Click that. We can mess with the saturation as well. Say so about there, that looks good. Once this is done, we need to change the blend mode. Go to multiply. Right, now we're gonna merge these layers together. Hold control, make sure they're both selected. Right click, merge layers. We call this shadows so we're not confused. Now, if we click off and click back on, you can see it's made quite a bit of a difference there, which is awesome. Final thing we need to do is give this image some depth. So to do that, we're going to blur the background. Click on the background layer. What we're going to do is we're going to hit Control or Command if you're on Mac. J, that's going to make a copy of our background layer. Next up, we're going to go over to Filter. We're going to go to Blur Gallery, and then we're going to go to Tilt Shift. Now we have these bunch of lines over here. So the dotted lines are where it's going to get blurry. This line over here is where it's going to stay normal. So we're kind of making this blending blur, if that makes sense. So what we're going to do is drag this down to the bottom. 
bring that blur up a little bit. Probably going to change it to 25. There we go. That looks awesome. What we're going to do is going to create some on the sides as well. So click on the side. You hold these dots over here. You see the cursor changes to these arrows. So hold down shift. I'm going to spin this so it's at 90 degrees. Bring this beast out here. Increase that blur to just behind her. Looks awesome. Exactly the same again on the other side. Not as much because there's not as much area behind her. So bring that out. Once that's done, hit OK at the top. It's going to add that blur in. And bang. It looks a lot better. So that image is done now and it's ready for you to send out to Lightroom or color correct, whatever you want to do in Photoshop. So here's my finished image straight out of Photoshop. And with a bit of editing, it looks like this. Very nice. I also applied the same techniques to this picture of Tanya from the saga of Tanya the Evil. I think this one looks absolutely awesome. So uh, check this one out. I basically put her on a bit of a World War II background and applied the same things I did for this one. I think it looks really awesome. But there we go. That's how to green screen your anime figures and, you know, kind of make them look like they're actually meant to be in their said backgrounds. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like always, don't forget to tag me on social media if you decide to do any of this green screening on your own anime figures. I'd love to see what you guys create. Don't forget to smash the like button if you enjoyed this video. Check out my links in the video description and subscribe for more anime figure tutorials just like this one. Till next time, peace!